Yesterday we talked about our 10 worst episodes of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, today we're going to talk about our top 10, and it seemed only appropriate that I wear my Sunnydale High School t-shirt to do so. If you'd asked me 12 months ago to collate this list, it would have been completely and utterly different to the list that it is today, because doing this project has dramatically changed my opinions on various episodes and various seasons as a whole. It forces you to view things through a critical lens, and as a result, it's kind of not possible anymore to just sit back and go with the flow and embrace the episode for what it is, which is part of why this list is so different to what it would have been before. Coming in at number one for me is season five's finale, The Gift. I absolutely adore this episode. It's the finale that the show should have had, which isn't to say that Chosen isn't a good episode. It is a good episode and I really, really enjoy it. But there's just something about The Gift, about the way it was written and crafted and filmed and acted and everything that just makes it the perfect finishing point for the show and for the characters. Number two is also from season five, The Body. This is one of those episodes that would never have been on the list before we started doing this project, and part of that is because it's such an enormously real and painful episode to watch, but now that's what makes it so brilliant. Coming in at number three, we have one that would have actually been on the previous list, season three's Doppelgangland. I absolutely adore this episode. It's completely and utterly silly, but it's so much fun and that's why I love it. it. Number four, Once More With Feeling season six. That episode pretty much changed television forever. Number five, Prophecy Girl season one. It's completely brilliant because that episode shapes so much of who Buffy becomes and the relationships that she has with the other characters. And I mean, who else but Buffy could take out the villain in a prom dress? Number six, Storyteller season seven. Completely and utterly meta. It's fun and it's funny, but it's also really, really complex under the surface, and it's really, really well done. Number seven, The Wish, season three. Oh my god, that episode. It introduces us to Anya, but it also gives us a look at what if. What if Buffy had never come to Sunnydale? What if she'd never become friends with Willow and Xander? What if all the people that she saved over the past two and a bit seasons were never saved? What, what happens to Sunnydale? What happens to these characters? How are their lives different? Number eight, Hush, season four. Another episode that basically changed the face of television for And the gentleman managed to be so completely and utterly creeptastic without ever saying a word. And that's part of why I love that episode as much as I do, is because it does have that enormous creep factor without anything at all being said. Number nine, Becoming part two, season two. Like Prophecy Girl, um, it, it kind of shapes so much of who Buffy becomes through the events of that episode, you know, she's saving the world again. But this time it's really personal and she has to deal with all these really personal things and all these teenage emotions on top of having to save the world. So it's really not surprising that at the end of it she skips town and goes away to LA to become a waitress. And number 10, Graduation Day Part 2, Season 3. I really love the mayor, so he had to be on this list somehow, and the end of high school is a huge thing in anybody's life, but when you're also the Slayer, it takes on a whole new level. Plus, this is the second time that Buffy's destroyed a school building, if you include the events that happen in the Buffy movie, which we will be snarking on Saturday. If you're in the US, Sunday, if you're in Australia, you should join us. So there you have it, that is my Buffy the Vampire Slayer 10 Best Episodes.